Hi, I'm Warren Allgaier, 9 Victor 1 Tango Delta in Singapore. Today I want to show you how I've set up my RXTX using Voice Shaper software to improve the efficiency and the punch of the sideband signal out of uh, the RXTX. Um, in a previous tutorial, we set up uh, Voice Shaper, Voice Shaper software, so I won't go into that now. We will be using the settings that we used in that, in that previous tutorial. Uh, with one exception, I've broadened out the lower end a little bit so we get a little bit more pleasing signal. The objective of the tutorial was to improve the punch of, uh, of Voice Shaper. And in this case, what I'm going for is three things. Optimal sound that you can get through a 2.4 kilohertz baseband, so a nice even sound across the entire uh, spectrum. I want to optimize the uh, level of the sound, so we're using some compression, as we explained in the earlier video, using some compression to raise the average level. And I want to, as much as possible, get as close as possible to the one watt output specification of the RXTX without, and this is key, without causing splatter into an adjacent channel. So, in order to do that, uh, I've got a setup here. Let me just run through real quick how I've set this up so you understand what we're doing. Um, first, we're going to use the Voice Shaper software, uh, which we demonstrated previously, set up in, in the way I've just described. And then I have a homemade uh, peak reading logarithmic voice, uh, VU meter. It's not a VU meter specifically because uh, a broadcast VU meter has very particular ballistics on how fast the meter will come up and how, how quickly it will decay. Mine is logarithmic, so it measures in dB, but it, uh, it's a peak reading meter. And I'm using that to verify the levels out of the voice shaper software and PC that go into the, uh, into the RXTX. Okay, so then we're using, over here, we're using um, a, a PC, and we're using a 40-30-20 build of the RXTX. By the way, this 40-30-20 build, just for anybody who's interested, also has been modified to have an external reference input, so I can actually drive it from my GPS uh, and have a precision frequency source, but that's probably the, the material for another tutorial. Um, so, we got the HDR, HDSDR and the RXTX. Here I've got a filter box that we're using to put in a low pass filter because we're doing these tests on 40 meters and those of you who've built an RXTX know that the second harmonic on 40 meters uh, is not within spec, so we need an external um, low pass filter, which is in this box. But this box also provides me with the capability to attach a scope so I can read the uh, RF voltage. And so, uh, so that's the next thing we're going to use. We've got a, an oscilloscope here that is set up to read the peak PEP uh, voltage across a 50 ohm load. And that will tell us what the real PEP power that it is that we're generating. And remember our goal is to get to one watt as much as possible. Back here, I've got a 60 dB pad uh, that it also serves as a dummy load for the high power equipment when I use it. The output of that pad then fits a splitter and goes to uh, an RX2, a Softrox RX2, which is my general purpose monitoring receiver. The output of that is displayed on a second iteration, a second PC and an iteration of HD SDR. Uh, and that's where we will look and, and assure that we're not splattering into an adjacent uh, uh, conversation. And then finally, we've got a spectrum analyzer up here, which serves two purposes. One is its confirmation on the peak levels that we're generating out of the system. And secondly, it lets us keep an eye on any harmonics or spurs that we're generating. Okay, so we're going to do three cases here. We're going to set up the system first with an uncorrected microphone. This is my my famous $12 Radio Shack microphone. And we will set it up so that we get one watt or as close to it as we can PEP without adjacent channel interference. And uh, then we'll listen to it. And so that's an uncorrected microphone. Test case number two is we will roll in the equalization that we set up uh, previously in the, um, in the previous tutorial. And that equalization will flatten the response across the, S, the sideband um, uh, passband and uh, 
greatly improve the sound, as you will hear. All right? And then test case number three is we're going to add to that, where we flatten the sound, we're going to add to that clipping, so we're going to reduce the, the overall peaks, and we're going to add compression, where we bring up and compress the, uh, the intelligence that's in the voice. And so at that case, we will have what I consider to be the optimum sound. We'll have as close to one watt as we can get without splattering. We'll have a very high average power level, and we will have a nice, even frequency response across the entire pass band. So with that, let's go. We're going to reset it so that there is no uh, equalization and there's no compression, no clipping. All right, we've got that. We're going to take a look over at the VU meter, and we can see that the, as the loop is playing, we're peaking right at green, which is zero, uh, zero dBm. It's just a reference level coming out of there, but every time we'll check that and make sure that that's exactly the same in all three scenarios. Okay, we go over to HDSDR, and we're going to put HDSDR in transmit. And I'm going to turn down the, the voice. Well, actually, I'm going to turn down the voice for a moment, and we go up to the received version of HDSDR, and we can see the waterfall. We can see what's happening with the waterfall. You see a little bit of trace over here where I've got on the right side just a little bit of upper side band splatter. Now I'm going to go to HDSDR transmit and I'm going to grab the mic gain control and we're going to take a look at the mic gain control as I increase it. We're going to get increase it and now you can see dramatic splatter. Uh, the, those are the signals going out either side on to the right and left of that waterfall. And that's what we want to avoid. So we're going to back that mic gain down until it's nice and clean. About, you know, I'm fudging it a little bit because I want to get some, I want to get some uh, good power out of it. Uh, everybody, everybody does that, I think. Okay, so we're going to set it about there. And it looks like I'm getting, uh, if you check on the scope, you can see the envelope, it looks nice and clean. And we're getting 16, 18, 20. We're, we're getting about peaks at about one watt. So that looks pretty good. Now we go over to the spectrum analyzer. We take a look. And it is peaking right at minus 30. Peaks are touching minus 30. OK, so we've got a sickle that is not splattering. It's got good, uh, good envelope. And it's got good spurious response. So what's it sound like? Let's take a look. One, two, three. This is Man Victor 1, Tango Delta Singapore, test 1, 2, 3. This is Man Victor 1, Tango Delta Singapore, test 1, 2, 3. Okay, so what we've got there is a signal that doesn't sound good at all. Uh, but what I'm pretty sure is that it is a function of this microphone uh, because we're not overmodulating and we're making, we're making good peak power. Uh, but that signal is not one I'd be proud of. And that's exactly why we're here, is to fix that. Okay, so let's go to case number two, readjust, and then take a listen. So we go to, back to Voice Shaper, and I am going to put in equalization on that microphone. And you can see that I've adjusted this a bit from the tutorial, as I said, to bring up uh, a better lower end. So now we're equalizing that microphone. And uh, we'll take a look at the output level. Looks like we could use just a bit of help on the output level. Uh, well, let's take a look. And I'm going to, okay, let's make that green. Good. And let's go to HDSDR. Take a look there. HDSDR in both cases on receive and on transmit. And on transmit, I'm going to grab the mic gain control again, and I'm going to, again, going to bring it up until I see some objectionable splatter about there. And I'm going to back it down until I get a nice, clean waterfall trace. Okay, let's confirm. We take a look at the scope. We're peaking one lot. Uh, there, I see 21 in there occasionally on the, on the peak reading. And on the spectrum analyzer, kind of confirms it. We're about one watt. So what we've done now is we've equalized the response of the microphone, and we're still transmitting. So let's take a listen, see what that sounds like. Singapore, test one, two, three. 
This is nine Victor one Tango wow. Delta Singapore. Test one two three. That's not bad. This is nine Victor one Tango Delta Singapore. Test one two three. Okay, that's this pretty good. I'd be happy with that. Actually, I'd put that on the air, no problem. We can make it a little bit better. So we're going to go to test case number three. We go back to voice shaper. We put in the gating, uh, noise gating, and compression and clip levels that we set during the setup session. And now I'm going to go, once again, same drill. Back to HDSDR in both cases. Adjust the mic gain for a nice, clean, Trace without objectionable modulation into the adjacent channel. And that's probably about right there. Okay, so what do we have? Well, looks like uh, on the scope, looks like our peaks are down a bit. I'm seeing 17, 18, I'm not seeing 21s. And that's a function of the clipper. The clipper is cutting off those, those uh, High level peaks so our absolute peak reading is going to be a little bit lower but our average power is going to be much higher and if we take a look at the spectrum analyzer it sort of confirms it the peak isn't going up as high spurious is still good so let's take a listen to that see what that sounds like Well, good or bad, that's a judgment you have to make. Uh, personally, I like the, the signal, the sound of the signal with equalization only and without the clipping and compression. Um, if you were in a strong signal situation, that would probably be a, a better signal to use because it actually sounds better. In QRM, in weak signal situations, in situations where you're fighting to get through a pileup or just get through noise with one watt, this compressed signal is going to have better penetrating power and it's going to sound better as we demonstrated when we set it up in Voice Shaper. So just to review, let's run through the, the three scenarios. And you can listen to them. Here is uh, unequalized and uncompressed microphone. This is Iron Victor 1, Tango Delta Singapore, test 1, 2, 3. This is Iron Victor 1, Tango Delta Singapore, test 1, 2, 3. Now I'm going to kick in the this is equalization. Iron Victor 1, Tango Delta Singapore, test 1, 2, 3. This is Iron Victor 1, Tango Delta Singapore, test 1, 2, 3. And now we're going to add one, compression and clipping. Delta Singapore, test 1, 2, 3. This is Nine Victor One Tango Delta Singapore Test One Two Three. This is Nine Victor One Tango Delta Singapore Test One Two Three. And I'm going to back down to end this with the one that I prefer, and that's no clipping and no compression. Of course, as we demonstrated before, you can change you can change the level of clipping and compression, the degree. I just wanted to use the same settings that we arrived at during during voice shape or setup session. So that's it. Uh, that's optimizing the RXTX. What we accomplished here was we set the passband of uh, our input audio signal so it was nice and flat across 2.4 kilohertz. We, uh, eat, we raised the level, the average level of that, and we did that getting one watt out of the RXTX and keeping an eye on the adjacent channels to make sure that we weren't splattering over into it. So it can be done. And we can get really nice sounding single sideband out of an RXTX, a cheap microphone, and a piece of free software. Thanks for listening. This is 9V1TD, 9Victor1Tango Delta, Singapore, Warren Algarve. Have a great day.